bit of an updated apartment tour because we moved in here in July. I think I gave a tour of the kind of like half put together, bless you. Sorry, my cat just sneezed. When we moved here in July, I gave kind of like a half put together slash vacant apartment tour. But now like six months later, I have it mostly like 95% put together. Everything is unpacked finally. It took so long, especially not being home very often. But now it feels homey. It feels like home, which is so nice. Start because this is my favorite room. This is my closet slash content slash beauty slash PR get ready room. This is the full closet. And then this rack on the end is clothes that I got recently. I color coded all of my jackets. And then here I have all my bags. I need to find a better way to organize those because I kind of just throw them all in there. So if you guys have any recommendations, let me know. And then here I have all of my accessories, hats and hair accessories and stuff. And then here I put this shelf, the exact height of all of my knee-high boots. And this is my beauty PR closet. So I have skincare, body care, and then hair care. And every time that my friends come over, they just come and shop this closet and can get whatever makeup, whatever skincare and stuff that they want because obviously I don't need this much. Hi buddy, you helping me with my tour? This is all of my sweatshirts and like workout jackets and then my sweatpants and then these all have my color-coded workout sets. I like being very organized. Then in here I have all of my sneakers. There's a little living room, dining room. I put up some Christmas decorations. This tree I told Taylor when we first started dating to go get a Christmas tree and he got that and it's three feet tall. The kitchen, you guys have probably seen this a lot in my vlogs. I think I got this little rug on Amazon and I love it. Collection of different Christmas trees, my crystals, sage, and then I've got all of my books down here. Next room, some of the artwork we have in here. So this is Taylor after he won Indian Wells. And then this is a cute little baby head. I don't really know, but it's from Jonathan Schultz and I love it. This is the master closet. Sorry, it's a little messy, but I've got all my shoes, color coordinated obviously, and my clothes are over here. Taylor's are all over here and we definitely need to tidy that room. This is the master bedroom. I did not make the bed this morning because I've been sitting working from bed. I've got my little desk here. That's where I work from most of the day. This is the master bathroom and I got this off Amazon. For your life, this is a great place. It is clean, pure, and fragrant. That makes no sense. Taylor's game room. I don't know how messy this is right now. Oh. He's really cute. He's oh, climbing. he is climbing. <laughs> I'm starting off this morning with my therapy appointment. I actually just restarted therapy. I've been on and off it for about eight years now. Right now I use BetterHelp, which is actually the sponsor of this video. During the pandemic, it was really difficult to find a therapist. It's hard to find a therapist in general coming from someone who's been through a few, but this platform makes it super simple to find a licensed therapist online. You can do it through video call. You can do it through phone call. You can do it through messaging, honestly, whatever you're comfortable with. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists. And because it's online, they don't necessarily have to be in your area. It just gives you a wider range of options to find the best fit for you. To get started, you just fill out a questionnaire. And in most cases, you'll get matched to a therapist within 48 hours or less. If it's not the right fit to start, which is totally possible and even sometimes common in therapy, you can switch to a different therapist at no additional cost. I always advocate that literally anybody can benefit from therapy. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to try to live a healthier and happier life. And if you're going to the gym to work on your physical health, why not give your mind the same sort of attention? If you think you might benefit from therapy, you can go to BetterHelp. That's H-E-L-P dot com slash Morgan Riddle. That helps support this channel and will also give you 10 percent off your first month. I love therapy and I actually normally really look forward to my appointments. Okay, I just got like full ready because I had to shoot an ad and then we're going to an NFL game later tonight. So I figured I might as well just get ready for that. Um, but this afternoon I wanted to do something that I do every year, which is looking back on the past year and looking forward to the year ahead and kind of mapping out how I want my next 12 months to go. 2023 was a really big year for me and I said that 
in a podcast interview in January at the start of this year that I just had a feeling like this year was gonna be a good year. It wasn't perfect, had ups and downs as expected. I think right now I'm definitely dealing with a little bout of seasonal depression, which is pretty normal for me this time of year, but I would say overall this year was a very good year so i kind of just wanted to talk about my year what worked what didn't i'm really open on here with how i'm feeling but i don't feel like i talk a ton about my personal life and what's really going on behind the scenes part of that is i feel like the more time that i've spent on social media i realize that people who are literally evil will use my vulnerabilities against me and so sometimes i feel like that makes it hard for me to just like talk about what's going on in my life here's some things that have gone on the last year for me i had to pretty severely cut some people out of my life and draw heavy boundaries like i never have before i got deeply betrayed by a friend for the first time had to dump a friend for the first time i got more hate than i've ever received in my entire life between Wimbledon threads and the New York Times article. I've learned that just growing on socials in general, you just open yourself up to more criticism and any time that something really, really good happens for you, you're gonna get a lot of positivity from it and a whole ton of negativity. And then in September of this year, there was a video that went viral on TikTok of this person just ripping my life apart. The comments were flooded with people talking about how shitty of a person I am. And then the next week or two weeks later, the person who initially made the first video because it went viral, went to the next tournament, found out where I was sitting and sat near me where the player's box was, filmed me during the match, came up to me and continued to harass me to get views moving was really stressful i got sick a lot i think i got food poisoning like three times but that just happens when you travel a lot so a lot of not great parts about this year for sure i've made a lot of mistakes i don't know anything i'm just doing my best like everyone else but something that i do at the end of every year and i'm going to do right now and show you guys is i take a big piece of paper and i write out every single month and then under the month, I will do bullet points of the best things that happened to me that month. A lot of things that I forget happened or things that I don't even really think about that when I lay it all out, I'm like, whoa, like January 2023 me would have been like, holy shit. So that is what we are going to write out right now. There is that. So I just wrote out some highlights, like career stuff, friend stuff, travel stuff from this year. So for example, January, I started this YouTube channel. Hit 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I think now we're at like 45,000. So if you are watching this and you have not subscribed, please do so. In March, I got new management. So I haven't really talked about this at all, but I do feel like in my whole trajectory of 2023, I feel like it is very important to mention, especially for anyone who's watching this, who is in content creation or wants to be a content creator. I fully believe now that your management can make or break your business. And I've seen this with myself and I've seen this with friends. I had one management that I was with for about a year when I first started and they were great for where I was at at the time. But at the start of this year, when I realized that I was just on kind of a different trajectory i made the scary decision to fire my old management and try to find a new one and that was definitely risky but it was the best business decision that i have ever made july was wimbledon so obviously wimbledon threads was like a big whole exciting thing i spent the summer in new york august was the new york times cover i hired a publicist and then following that was the cut and Tadler and town and country and just getting really good press. October last month was kind of a rough month for me. If you've watched my recent videos, uh, I just was feeling off. I don't know. Taylor got injured. That sucked. The only really good thing that happened was I signed with UTA. My purpose for signing with them is that they are going to help me do things outside of social media and outside of brand deals. And then we're here in November. I went to my first F1 race so fun this month and next month i'm working with dyson apple and away luggage which are all three brands that have been on like my top top dream brands to work with i'm telling you guys writing this stuff out and just speaking it to the camera if you guys do this please 
write it out and then make a voice memo in your phone or something and like say it all out loud because it's not normal to constantly be talking about all the good things in our life and talking about all of our successes constantly like that's whack that feels weird for me to do right now but that's the purpose of this video so i'm doing it i've been just writing this down and saying it out loud to the camera right now i feel so much more confident than i did 10 minutes ago because i'm looking at it and i'm like i did all of that this year like that i'm proud of myself so and i think march of this year i made a video about how i do my vision boards which i set as my phone background so this is my phone background for i would say majority of this year and this worked out pretty well for me this year we've got tennis youtube i did get my dream bag i do have a little closet get ready with me room like i just said i'm working with apple the wagon will always be my dream car if i wanted to be really financially irresponsible i guess technically i could currently i drive a 2011 piece of junk jeep wrangler literally has 182,000 miles on it and I love her until the day where I'm driving down the freeway and all the doors fall off and it explodes. I probably will not get another car. <laughs> There's just no reason for me to have that expense. Anyways, I'm going to make my 2024 vision board. To start that, I will make a list just in the notes app on my phone of words that describe the year that I wanna have. Then I will go in Pinterest and search those words, find images that kind of exemplify my ideal year and the goals that I'm working towards. I think at this point, we all know what a vision board is. I don't really need to dive into that. When you are making goals and creating this kind of annual plan, make sure that these goals are in a smart format and that's an acronym for specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound i feel like when a lot of people do vision boards they will put on this big mansion beach house on the coast and they're going to manifest a million dollars and their current situation is that they have three roommates and they're making less than six figures that's a pretty big jump to make in one year of course, anything is possible, but when you are working towards these manifestations, you don't wanna get into a habit of losing. And what I mean by that is if at the end of the year you have your own one bedroom apartment and you are making now $200,000 a year, you're still disappointed that it wasn't the beach house and it wasn't the seven figures, you are setting yourself up to be disappointed if you don't allow yourself to be proud of what you have accomplished. So here's my 2024 Pinterest board vision board I like having a word that is my theme for the year and I've decided that my word my theme for 2024 is momentum and I was having a conversation with my therapist last week and she brought up this word and she told me that I have this pattern of getting into these swings of momentum everything is on the up and up and going well and if I fall out of line on one thing for example if I don't go to the gym for a week it throws off my momentum for that and everything else in my life i have momentum and what that means for me is waking up early doing my walks going to the gym getting my work done being consistent about content i feel unstoppable but if i have one day where i fall off that momentum everything comes crashing down it's something i'm working on so for example when i'm talking about these smart goals right one of my goals for 2024 is to maintain momentum and having a bit of a come to jesus with myself this past weekend something that really really throws off my momentum is hangovers i get the hangovers of a six-year-old man i can't form a sentence my hangover is minimum 48 hours no matter how much i drink my body cannot process or handle alcohol my smart goal is to have good momentum for 2024 a specific part of that is being way smarter about how i drink or maybe just not drinking at all because it f's up my momentum so bad and affects every single part of my life so just try to be honest with yourself and get very granular about what you have to do in order to attain the things on your vision board. And if you guys have a word or a theme for 2024, let me know in the comments because I'm curious what everyone else's would be. I have not gone to a football game in a very long time. I used to go for work a lot in like 2019 to Vikings games because the company I worked for had a partnership with them. But Taylor is a huge Chargers fan. Colors are yellow and blue. I got this little yellow mini skirt that i need to iron and then this is actually a men's crew neck from abercrombie i'm a vintage san diego chargers little crew neck and i got these blue jeffrey campbell boots so i've not tried this on yet but we're gonna give it a go okay i'm pretty happy with this i wish i had a clear bag that wasn't colored because this does not go with this at all but it's the only clear bag that i have and they have a no 
purse policy, but that's the fit. Bolt up. Bolt up.